The prankster's next target is Yatesy. Someone you don't want to upset. But one beachgoer is taking extra precautions. Oh. <laughs> Where did he come from? He's got a large oh, he's going out. At least he's heading. He's in a life jacket. If you see a, a fully grown man enter the water in a life jacket near a rip, the alarm bells start ringing. He's not going to drown. Man. That's the best bit. He's definitely not going to drown, but he just won't make it in. The rip was pretty strong, and before you know it, he was just gone. Blissfully unaware of the commotion he's causing, Ivan, from China, drifts 200 metres offshore. I've got a life jacket just out in front of me to the left. You can see him. Yeah, we've got him, Chapo. He's cruising. I reckon he's just fallen off one of the P&O cruise ships. It's meant to keep him safe. Oh, no way! But Ivan's life vest has landed him in very deep water. He's all right, I might have to go get him soon. You might be lucky. Well, Otherwise he's going to be New Zealand. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, Bondi Central, he's just cruising, isn't he? He's three days. He's having the time of his life He is, there. he actually I is. I don't think he knows how much danger he's really in. Mate, he's just done the loop the loop and now he's, he's coming in down there. What's right. your name? Oh, my name is Ivan. Where are you from, mate? I'm from China. China? Yeah. Well, welcome to Bondi. Yeah. How was your swim? Oh, uh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you why, why did you want to wear the life jacket today? Uh, just help me to stay in the water for a longer time. Ah, it's very That's clever. It. Did you yeah. notice how fast you went? Really? You were, did you see how far out you were? Oh, I didn't see. Yeah, you were really far out. I wish more people would wear them sometimes. It would make our job a lot <laughs> easier, I swear to God. Yeah. It really would. Uh, yeah, very nice, very beautiful beach and a very, be a very nice people. <laughs> good, nice to meet you, Legend. Have a good night. Okay, you too. It's unreal. It's a success story. <laughs> Today, a major international model is coming and she is ruffling feathers amongst the lifeguards. We found out that it was um, the international supermodel, Carly Kloss. Today, Vogue magazine have handpicked some off-duty lifeguards for the shoot. I said all our headshots are up on the Channel 10 site, so they went to that and picked the four faces out of the whole group, so I suppose we're the lucky four that got picked. Hoppo, for this one, I think, had to call up the pretty boys. Well, obviously, they left Jesse and I out of it. Making the cut, starstruck trainee, Tommy. She's the nicest celebrity, gosh, yeah. For her fame and stuff and how beautiful she is. She's really nice. Not all the lifeguards share the excitement. They're just extras. They're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guys don't get picked are probably up there bagging the shit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> They're absolutely nothing. They're just props. She did yeah. say that she wanted to be next to you because yeah. your hair were very similar. Too short. I was uh, pretty gutted. I went and got a special haircut for the shoot and uh, I don't think it worked for Vogue. I have no idea why they chose those guys. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, we're working, otherwise they would have used us, wouldn't they, Box? She liked my hair, she gave me a compliment. That's, you know, I've got 35 lifeguards that bag out my hair and one supermodel that loves it, so it's worth it. Everyone thinks that working down at Bondi as a lifeguard is probably the answer to everyone's, you know, love life woes. But um, yeah, look, it's not the ideal paradise for meeting your, your dream date down here that everyone thinks it is. Enter Bondi's favourite matchmaker. Well, as you know, there's a lot of us now that are married in the service and um, there's nothing like helping a mate in need of some uh, love. Oh, I need some help. Singlets is a bit of a heart throb, you know, he's got the nice torso and he's got the long big jaw and the blonde hair, you know, it kind of gives across that iconic lifeguard look. With Harry's help, is Singlet's life about to change? Singlet's and I are just travelling down to the southern end of the beach and a stunning lady approaches us saying she had a purse lost on the beach. Thanks, guys. We had the purse. It was up in the tower and 
I could see a dinner date right in front of me. Dinner date, you two. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> There's lives to save here. Yeah, so it was awkward moments go. It was pretty awkward. What would you like, candlelit dinner? Where do you like to eat? You know, I'm feeling very embarrassed about the whole thing, just trying to think about work and what's going on in the water. And you two just become sweethearts. Uh, too much pressure, too much pressure. Harry's is doing his matchmaker thing. Grab hands, grab hips, let's dance, everybody. No one likes being set up, let's face it. So I'm waiting for my moment to make this young lady's day and hand the purse over and just as we're getting to the tower. Can you go back down to back please? I was like, no way. Thank you so much, guys. Are we urgent, Ruth? Mate, we've got four in the rosin. Um want a couple of rides for this two aren't great. They ruined our moment. You know, we were just escorting her up to the tower to get a wallet, and there was a bit of small talk going on, and so when love came to town, I tried to jump that train. <laughs> we got to find him some love. It was so close, and he was so normal. But you know what? She'll be back. She's from America, and everyone goes on trips, and they all want to see a native kangaroo when they come to this country, and she's gotten a lifeguard across kangaroo right here. Wow. Yeah, look, you never know what happens down here, and uh, if Buggy Girl did return one day, I. I certainly wouldn't be against, uh, you know, going for a drink maybe or, or catching up. She lost the purse, you lost your heart. <laughs> now up in the tower, I could see these people walking around with this fake snake and think, oh, you know, how's this going to turn out? Three visitors from Bangladesh are in Australia to make videos for their YouTube channel. Our prank is epic snake prank. It's we're just swinging that snake over the people and uh, screaming like snake, snake. In their home country, these pranksters have enjoyed huge success with their epic snake prank. But how will this classic stitch up go down at Bondi? Oh my god! Oh my god, snake, snake, snake! Yes. Here I got the amazing Huge reaction. Huge reaction, yeah. The pranksters may be laughing, but not everyone is getting the joke. Annoying, and um, I think it was annoying. Didn't want to, really want to jump to conclusions that it was a fake because you never know here. <laughs> These guys with their snake, you know, who knows? I probably upset someone. The prankster's next target is Yatesy, someone you don't want to upset. You know, then I saw him go up near Yatesy and thought, oh, this could go pear shaped with Yatesy. Back to the flag, please. Thank you. He's getting a little bit more cranky in his old age. Yeah, so I'm just hanging there in the zone by myself, being a good lifeguard, watching this incredibly dangerous piece of water, and... Oh, they got Yates here. Yeah, it's Australian. <laughs> oh, my God! Woo! <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, I think they got him well, because he uh, looked like he was flaring up, and he had the snake as if he was going to, you know, probably wrap it around one of their necks. Startled, I was startled. Snake behind you, oh my god! Ah! <laughs> and I'm pissed off. <laughs> then I see the bright side of it and then I'm happy. <laughs> it was like that, and then it's like, ah, oh, sweet. Yatesy's emotional journey may not be over just yet. They were from Bangladesh and they were students. And I think one I think they had like like a, a ticklish, you know, like a snake actually, there's a snake. Off, mate. He's got me, eh? Good one, Mick. A few waves rolling in now. Got to the patient and I realised he's a big bugger. So I got him on the board. He's got him now. And started paddling back and here comes a wave, and I thought, beauty, straight back to shore. Probably about half a second before the wave hit, I thought, oh, this guy's a bit far forward, actually. In his quest to master the board rescue, Tommy invents a technique of his own. I hit the water and surface, and my first thoughts was, how the hell did I just do that? and I just felt this slow motion lift like the aircraft taking off. I was up near the helicopters doing their tour guides around Bondi. I was 
pretty high, but what goes up must come down. <laughs> <laughs> Every rescue you do down here, everything's a learning curve. I always wanted to do pole vault. He weighed 100 plus kilos and I weighed 50. That's good. <laughs>